It's time to get your news on. We are VK1 WIA. And this edition of National News is for week commencing March 5, 2023, in our 28th year of non-stop news. And this week, Chris VK3FY on behalf of the WIA board joins us. Plus, much more in this edition of News from the Wireless Institute of Australia. I'm editor Graham VK4BB. Ham Radio News. Nobody does it better. We are VK1 WIA. Good morning, everyone. This is Chris VK3FY on behalf of the WA board for VK1 WA Weekly News. The WIA AGM will be held on the 13th of May 2023. Details will be provided to enable registrations closer to the event. The WIA Merit Award. The WA Merit Award program identifies and recognises sustained outstanding achievement in the diverse field of amateur radio that furthers the science of radio and or service to the WIA. Nominations are called for using a special form located on the WIA website. If the nomination is successful, these are usually announced at the WIA annual general meeting and where possible, presented at that gathering of members. All WA Merit Awards are not necessarily awarded every year. Awards for this year's AGM will close at the end of March. Frequency Allocations The WIA is currently reviewing the rules for frequency allocations for repeaters and beacons. This review is being conducted by the WAA Spectrum Strategic Committee. Dayton 2023. This year, there will be a number of hams going to the Dayton Hamvention to be held on the third weekend of May. Chris VK3FY and Lee VK3GK will be once again attending this year's Contest University and the DX and Contest Dinners. The WIA is arranging a meeting with the current president of the ARRL and the WIA board members Chris and Lee whilst they are there. Any VK hams intending to visit the Dayton Hamvention can communicate through the Facebook page VK is going to Dayton to arrange catch-ups, etc. Those wishing to attend the DX and contest dinners will need to book in advance as these activities are usually sold out prior to the event. This has been Chris, VK3FY, on behalf of the WA Board and VK1WAA Weekly News. This is Linda, VK7QP. On Sunday, this broadcast goes out on repeaters all over VK7 and on digital radio, DMR Talk Group 5 and D-Star Reflector 91C. We also go out on UHF-CB Channel 15 in Hobart. You can hear this broadcast again on Tuesday night at 8 o'clock on the repeaters VK7RAA in northern VK7 and VK7RAD in southern VK7. Now, discussion point. Equipment trading news. Beware of radio selling scammers. Here's Justin, VK7TW. Someone else got scammed by a regular scammer selling an ICOM 7300 from the, an alleged deceased estate in Turner's Beach. The scammer took the money and ran. Thankfully, the Bank of Queensland have frozen the bank account pending further investigation. The buyer said that the seller was very confident on the phone, even sending a photo of his Tasmanian driver's licence, indicating that he lived at Rochalie, but it had expired in 2021. 
The seller usually lists the item as a deceased estate, says he doesn't know much about it, and claimed to have lived in Bishano, Launceston and Olveston, and other suburbs, but doesn't want to meet up in person. If you are fairly confident it's a scam, you can Google the bank account BSB number to see what bank it belongs to, and contact the bank. They really appreciate the intel and freeze the bank accounts from the scammers. When I rang them, copy and paste photos of the images they supply into Google Image Search as they steal most of the images off the off the web to entice you to buy it so you can soon see if it's fraudulent. Silent Key Jason, VK7ZJA and some other friends would notify Facebook Marketplace, Gumtree and eBay, read the dodgy listings and usually got them removed. All I can say is buyer beware, don't send any money, ask to see the goods in person and then pay. And be very wary of using some of the money transfer sites. And that's 73 from Eric, VK7 Echo Victor. From here, there and everywhere, you've tuned to the Wireless Institute of Australia's National News Service. We are VK1 WIA. Now, international news with VK2 LAW Jason. Hello, leading this week's international news from Region 1. The overview of the national 160 metre allocations within IARU Region 1 have been updated. The new document is available at IARU Region 1 HF Committee. At 7pm on the 6th of March 1923, BBC Broadcasting in Scotland officially began from a studio housed in a small attic apartment at Rex House in Glasgow and the transmitter at Port Dundas. Using 1.5 kilowatts on 722 kilohertz, the station was allocated the call sign 5SC. This year, 100 years on, the BBC Amateur Radio Group will be celebrating the anniversary with special event call sign Golf Bravo 5 Sierra Charlie on the 4th, 5th and 6th of March from the present BBC Pacific Key headquarters using HF, VHF, UHF and QO100. In news from Region 2, St Vincent and the Grenadines. The Radio Rainbow League, Yulu Radio Movement, RRL, YRM, is now one step closer to developing an island-wide HF emergency communications network, thanks to another donation of radios and antennas from Barrett Communications Australia. The equipment, which arrived on February 14, 2023, according to RRL YRM Director Ronald de Riggs, Juliet 88, Charlie Delta, can be viewed as a gift of love, not only from Barrett, but from all the agencies and government departments that assisted with the transport and clearance of this vital equipment. The equipment is normally powered by a 12-volt DC source which makes this ideal in times of natural or man-made emergencies. It allows radio operators to communicate locally, regionally and worldwide in the absence of a phone service and it's possible to send emails wirelessly through a program called WinLink and Clovermail as well as sending receiving texts and other digital modes like PSK31 and RTTY. Pictures could also be transmitted wirelessly via SSTV and with an increasing number of ham radio satellites and balloons, one of which is believed to have been mistakenly shot down recently, hams can monitor the weather on a real-time basis as well as communicating via these birds. The National Science Foundation awarded a nearly 50000 US dollar grant to Nathaniel Frizzle, PhD, Assistant Professor of Physics and Electrical Engineering at the University of Scranton to support the Ham Radio Science Citizen Investigation, HamSci Workshop 2023. He also received a grant of just over $25,000 from Amateur Radio Digital Communications to support the workshop. The HamSci Workshop 2023 will take place March 17 and 18 at the University of Scranton and the historic Radisson and Lackawanna station. 
online registration to join from the comfort of your own home via Zoom is also available. Ahead of Region 3 news for our final story from Region 2 this week, we visit with a group of hams in Minnesota, USA on a wintertime fishing expedition. Kent Peterson, Kilo Charlie Zero, Delta Golf Yankee from Amateur Radio Newsline tells us what they caught while at the lake. Here's a hint, it wasn't fish. In Minnesota, it's considered a winter tradition for some people to go out on the frozen lakes for fishing. One group that took to the frozen waters in the Twin Cities region of the state was hoping for a different kind of catch. They set up their equipment on White Bear Lake at Matamidi Beach in the hopes of reeling in some QSOs while operating portable. This was the February 11th Hams on the Ice event where antennas took place of fishing rods and the waves being plumbed were radio waves. The four-hour event drew 20 or so amateurs. Some brought portable heaters. Others were simply warmed by the idea of working some DX, and many did. This was the amateur's winter equivalent of a monthly group gathering known as Hams in the Park, held during warmer months. According to a video on the YouTube channel of Matthew K0LWC, the Hams were also there to provide an opportunity for some of the region's youngest licensees. With a little help, some of the newer Hams got their first contacts on HF Radio. With Mike Fright being a big concern for a lot of newcomers, you might even say they broke the ice. And to our own backyard in Region 3, news from India, ham radio could be one of the most useful technologies whose potential is evergreen, said the founder of the National Institute of Amateur Radio, S. Suri, Victor Uniform 2, Mike Yankee. In an effort to create awareness about the same, his book, The Untapped Potential of Amateur Radio, serves as a guide to all who wish to learn the workings of ham radio. The book was launched on the occasion of World Science Day at the Nyar campus by V. Sivakuma, IGP Intelligence, Telangana Police, T. Hari Babu, IRRS Deputy Director, Ministry of Communications, and G. L. Rao, Chairman NIAR, all of whom are avid ham enthusiasts themselves. The event had not just regular hams in attendance, but also doctors, engineers, advocates and journalists who have over the years nurtured their interest in the workings of radio. For VK1 WIA National News in Sydney, I'm Jason, VK2 LAW. Who listens to radio? I'm Richard, VK2 SKY. Robert, VK3 ARM. Hi, I'm Bob, VK4BOB in Cairns. This is John, VK5DJ. I'm Mark, VK6QI. Justin, VK7, Tangled Whiskers. Let's go! We are VK1WIA. Now, operational news with VK4FUQ. Felix. Hello there. Now, contest wise, 2023. AWRLDX phone contest this weekend. This contest sees us, VK, as DX stations, and we contact W stroke V stations only. 0000 hours UTC Saturday through 2359 hours UTC Sunday. The 86 Commonwealth Contest, BEIU, happens 11 12 March. CW only, between 1000 hours UTC and 1000 hours UTC. March 18, 19, the third weekend. John Moyle Field Day, UTC 0100 hours Saturday to 0059 hours Sunday. Yoda Contest, Youngsters on the Air. First round, 22nd of April, 0800 hours to 1959 hours UTC. May 6th, Saturday, Harry Angel Memorial Sprint, 106 minutes. The Harry Angel Memorial Sprint has been run annually since 1999. It is usually held on the first Saturday in May each year. 10 hours UTC to 11.46 UTC. May 2021. 20, Don Evans Memorial Slow Moors Contest, 
begins the weekend after Mother's Day. ADM intersection, Saturday 20th of May, 6 to 9pm Sydney time. 40 metre section, afternoon of Sunday 21st of May, 1 to 4 p.m. Sydney time. June 24-25, winter, VHF, UHF field day. 0100 hours UTC, Saturday 24, 2005, hours UTC, Sunday 25. But in VK6, add 3 hours on to start and end times. June weekend, prior to the second Monday of June, VK shires. DX window, and our foreign play this week include three from here in VK. VI10 Soda, all year from Summers and VK1. The special event station, VI100 MB, is active all year. Celebrating the centenary of VK2's Manly and District Radio Club. A group of amateurs including Dan, VK6 NAD, Michael, VK6 TU, will activate the yet-to-be-confirmed call sign of VI6CRO in recognition of the NASA, Carnarvon and Overseas Telecommunications Commission historic location, April 17-23, to, to coincide with the massive surge of visitors as a result of the April 20 eclipse event in the area. The station will be set up in the middle of the historic ODC buildings, between the Kazagran horn used during Apollo 11 and the large 30 metre dish. Also near the station site is the Carnarvon Space and Technology Museum, which Moon astronaut Buzz Aldrin opened in 2012. Guam QRV is N7JVJ until April 28 on 40 to 10 metres using SSB and FT8. QSL via the operator's instructions. For VK1 WIA National News, I'm Felix VK4 FUQ Enningham. From here, there and everywhere, you've tuned to the Wireless Institute of Australia's National News Service. We are VK1 WIA. Now, special interest group news with VK3 GTV. Cole. Hello, first up, it's Worldwide Special Interest Group News, ATV. Every pixel tells a story. Hackaday has published an entertaining YouTube video searching for space pirates on old military satellites. The video explains how US fleet SATCOM UHF transponders, still in space from the 1970s, are being used illegally, often for criminal purposes. It also describes using a simple RTL receiver to listen in on these pirate transmissions. Worldwide Special Interest Group's CW. Nervous Novices CW Net on 80 metres. A new weekly CW Net has been recently started in Ireland and could be the formation of maybe similar here in VK. It's a friendly place for inexperienced operators, for anyone still learning Morse, and for those who would like to have a chat using CW without feeling the pressure of a traditional QSO. This new Nervous Novices Net takes place every Wednesday at 20.30 Irish local time, somewhere between 3.550 and 3.555 MHz. Good operating practices and quality sending are highly encouraged, but are not required. There's no maximum speed, however the net requires that all operators QRS to the slowest participant so that everyone can copy. For those still new to CW, this sure sounds an enjoyable way to improve your skills. In South Africa, another CW idea is to create some space for the new amateur radio CW operator without feeling intimidated trying to break into a conversation at normal speeds. The first SARL CW QRS week runs from Wednesday the 3rd of March to Tuesday the 9th of March, with activity from 15.30 to 16.30 UTC each day. The exchange is an RST report and your name, nothing more. Worldwide Special Interest Group's Final Frontier. 
The USA's Federal Communications Commission has approved Amazon's plan to deploy and operate 3,236 broadband satellites, subject to conditions that include measures for avoiding collisions in low-Earth orbit. Amazon got initial FCC clearance for its KA-band project Kuiper constellation in 2020 on the condition that it secured regulatory approval for an updated orbital debris mitigation plan. The FCC said its conditional approval of this mitigation plan allows Kuiper to begin development of its constellation in order to bring high-speed broadband connectivity to customers around the world. The conditions include semi-annual reports that Kuiper must give the FCC to detail the collision avoidance manoeuvres its satellites have made, whether they've lost the ability to steer away from objects and other debris risk indicators. In the order, the FCC also requires Kuiper to ensure plans to deorbit satellites after their seven-year mission, keeping inhabitable space stations in addition to the International Space Station in mind. Worldwide Special Interest Group's Radio Amateur Old Timers. Clive joins us now with some unfortunate news. Hello everyone, this is Clive, VK6, Charlie Sierra Whiskey. Unfortunately, there will be no RAOTC bulletin tomorrow. Due to personal circumstances, producer Bill, VK3BR, has had to resign immediately from this position. A volunteer to take Bill's place is urgently sought. However, the April news should appear on schedule. Some good news. Chris, VK6JI, has volunteered to assist Webmaster Andrew, VK3CAH. Chris is well qualified in this area, and the website has been brought up to date. Have a look by typing www.raotc.org.au or just Google RAOTC Broadcasts and follow the links. The March issue of the RAOTC journal OTN was posted on February the 19th, so keep an eye open for your copy. VK6 members and friends of the RAOTC are reminded that the monthly lunch will be held on Tuesday, March the 14th at the Woodbridge Hotel in East Guildford. All are welcome. So once again, no RAOTC bulletin this month. The next one will be on Monday, April the 3rd. 7-3 from Clive, VK6CSW. Thanks, Clive. On to Worldwide Special Interest Group's Yota, Youngsters on the Air. And not only Alec this week, but from Alara, their president, Michelle. Freshman Katie Campbell represented Columbiana High School at a National Amateur Radio Club convention in Orlando, USA, Hamcation 2023. She was selected to give a presentation in the youth forum entitled The ABCs of a YL in STEM, School Amateur Radio Clubs and Code Coaching. In the presentation, Katie explores gender disparity in STEM and asserts the early introduction of amateur radio is a potential solution to that issue. Katie has an extra class level license, the highest US level available, a process that she began when she was in fifth grade as a result of being a founding student member of Columbiana's Amateur Radio Club. Katie hopes to encourage other young women in STEM to put themselves out there and learn more about the field, as well as teach others. It's important to get young women in leadership positions to provide diverse views. Katie will next travel to Dayton to represent young ladies in Morse code in May, and will be teaching a Morse code class in Ottawa, Canada at the Yoda Camp in July. She hopes to continue participating in presentations and teaching youth amateur radio. For WIA National News, I'm Michelle, VK2AYL. Thank you for that report, Michelle. Now for news of a space station contact with students in Malta. An ARISS contact between students at Stella Maris College, Grizza Malta, call sign 9H1MRL, and the International Space Station took place successfully on February 15th. It was the first ever ARISS contact from the European island nation of Malta. ISS crew member astronaut Josh Casada. KI5CRH 
use the ISS callsign OR4 ISS on the downlink frequency of 145.800 MHz. The ARISS team Malta made use of the callsign 9H1MRO, the club of the Malta Amateur Radio League, MRAL. The downlink signal was receivable in the British Isles and across Europe, and the contact was conducted by five local radio amateurs, Dominic 9H1M, Manuel 9H1GW, Andrew 9H2AV, Trevor 9H5TS, and Anthony 9H2AS from the station set up in the school's auditorium with 10 element crossed Yagi and rotator on the roof. Stella Maris College is part of a network of Lasallian colleges that include De La Salle College and the Melia Retreat Center. The schools take their inspiration from the founder, John Baptist de la Salle, in the Christian faith. John de la Salle is patron saint of the teachers. For VK1 WIA National News, I'm Alec, VK2 APC in Sydney. Now back over to you, Cole. Thanks, Michelle and Alec. Speaking of Alec, he, along with his dad, Pete, VK2 LP, took a detour from a recent trip to Melbourne to catch up with Bruce, VK3 Triple F, and myself in Bendigo. It was a great opportunity for three WIA news presenters to get together, and a photo of us can be seen on Bevan, VK5BD's video version of the broadcast. Worldwide Special Interest Group's Rescue Radio. One month in and the rescue and recovery operations continue after those earthquakes struck Syria and Turkey with casualties reaching nearly close on 50,000. Please note these frequencies. 28.540 MHz, 3.777 and 7.092 MHz. Hams are asked to keep these frequencies clear for emergency traffic. Amateur radio continues to be the major link for communications for the entire area. Turkish amateur radio operator Aziz Sasa, TA1E, has been at the disaster areas coordinating frequencies for the teams and carrying out search and rescue operations. Sasa was interviewed on the BBC Digital Planet program, where he talked about the continued amateur radio help during the disaster. While the entire program lasts 46 minutes, the interview with Sasa is within the first six minutes. For VK1 WIA National News, I'm Cole, VK3 GTV. Across Australia, from VK1 WIA, you're tuned to the WIA National News Service. Here in Campbelltown, it can be heard on a host of frequencies, including 6 meters, 52.525 FM, and on the dural repeaters, on the 2 meter repeater on 147.000, and the 70 centimeter repeater on 438 decimal 525. I am Pete, VK2LP, for the WIA National News Service. This is VK1 WIA. All points of contact from today's news stories are to be found in print when you read the web editions www.wia.org.au. 2023 social scene and clubs are welcome to submit text with audio for this section and details of all WIA affiliated clubs and societies can be found on the WIA website including email addresses and website links. And of course today in VK3 is Melbourne's Wyndham Amateur Radio Club's Hamfest happens today as I said the 5th of March. In Queensland, we've got two for the rest of the year. That's from Redcliffe and also from Sunshine Coast Amateur Radio Club. Details in a sec. In VK3, we've got Antenna Palooza at Druin. That's April 15, 16. As I said, April 1, Redfest happens at Redcliffe. That's the VK4 Redcliffe. The WIA AGM. It's still proposed for Canberra. No details on that one yet, other than it will be a hybrid event. When? May 13. 
and the Zerg Convention and Fox Hunting Championships, June 10 to 11. Back to VK4, Sunfest, September 9 at Mountain Creek State School's massive air-conditioned auditorium. And in Tasmania, November 4 and 5, Hobart, Alara Meet 2023. Now till next we meet, I'm Graham, VK4BB. Walk softly. From Australia, this has been the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. This broadcast is in text, audio and video and is accessed on wia.org.au. Courtesy of Bevan, VK5, BD's ATV and YouTube channel, this has been WIA National News. We're back now, live and local, and your voice, your callbacks. And don't forget, tick like.